Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Dairobi Health Show. Today, I've got Devin Burke back for a second time. Devin, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks for having me back, Dave. I'm excited. I enjoyed our last conversation, so I'm glad we're getting to have another one. Yeah, me too. And after it was done, uh, for those of you listening, I talked to Devin. Our last one was about sleep, of course, because currently uh, Devin is uh, uh, the leader of a, a, a group called uh, Sleep Science. Is that the Sleep the Science Academy? Sleep Science Academy. Thank you. <laughs> and and we talked about that. But the fact is, I got really interested in Devin's backstory. And Devin, um, you've worked with high achieving people, and I thought, boy, that itself is worth another episode. And uh, just share with us a little bit about your past and what you did before Sleep Science Academy. Yeah. So before Sleep Science Academy, I, I was really helping people that were running companies, people that were entrepreneurs, running uh, executives, anyone that had a lot of, let's just say a lot of responsibility while also running families. I was helping them find balance or find the balancing act between how not to go bankrupt in their their life while they continue to be successful in, in their professional role. Uh, so it was really, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating because there's, you, you really, for me, I love human psychology and I especially, I like um, getting into people's minds that are top at what they do, whether, you know, it's yeah. running a company or they're just, you know, innovators. Um, so I really, I started to really understand the psychology of, of what pe gets these people stuck in certain areas of their life. Um, and so it, it was, it's still something that I do a little bit of. Mostly my focus is on Sleep Science Academy, but I, I still still coach a very small select handful of high-performing entrepreneurs to this day. Um, just because and, and if you didn't, I still think it'd be a great episode because that's what you did. It's what led yeah. to Sleep Science Academy. So you have all this experience with it. You're fascinated with it. You're a student of success and you've worked with high-achieving people. And um, I'm sure that's given you a lot of great insights. As a matter of fact, you sent me eight <laughs> eight, eight points. I'm sure there's many, but there is. It's just, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, it, when it was, it was really hard to, I mean, the, the list could have been like a hundred. Right. And so yeah. I, I figured, you know, what were the eight that I felt were the most impactful for, for the clients that I've worked with and are currently working with. So I figured, Hey, let's just start with these eight. Although there, there are many more and each of these, yeah. there are subcategories within each of these, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, there's, there's a lot to it. We can, we can dive into those, those habits if, if you want. Yeah, sounds good. There's just one thing I want to say before we get started. And that is I was introduced to personal development early in my life. And I'm so grateful for that because, uh, and when I say personal development, it means a lot of things to a lot of people. Uh, some people think of raw, raw meetings or, or motivational speakers, which I always thought was a terrible name because, uh, um, I've heard many different speakers. I've been to a lot of events. I've read a lot of books, listened to a lot of things. And I found that motivation was a very small part of personal development, frankly. Mm -hmm. And to me, the word personal development, I take it very, very literally. Personal, me, development, working on myself. That's all yeah. I consider it. And I, 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 I think of myself as my own greatest science experiment, you know, <laughs> Uh, and that's what personal development taught me was that I can improve. I can change. Yes. If there's something in my life I'm happy with, I can take it as an object of focus and work on it. I've always believed that. I understand there are limits. I, I, I'm not uh, Pollyanna about it. Uh, all of us, we have uh, in health some genetic limits. Some people have chronic issues. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But I also believe we all have a huge potential and we ought to try for being the best we can be. And that's kind of my own, my own uh, kind of lens that I see this through is, for example, I, I worked out hard this morning, uh, not because I think I can ever look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or any physique competitor or anything of the kind, um, but it, it helps me be at my best, mm -hmm. right? And so I just wanted to share those few thoughts that that's kind of what I was going for was people listen to this, um, that I hope they feel the same way, uh, that as we go through these things, it's, there's simply guides to help each of us do better in whatever area. Yeah. I think it's a human desire underneath every, every, everyone has this innate desire for being better. Some people suppress it. Some people unfortunately are not in the, the, the greatest environments to, to mm -hmm. really let that flourish. Um, 
and it's a shame. And I feel just like you, I feel extremely grateful to be exposed to um, this type of information from a young age, which has really helped me um, personally with my health and with my business and with my mindset and relationships. And um, I feel so grateful because there are so many people that unfortunately they don't have the opportunity or they don't either they're in environments that are just, they, they never get that chance. And it's such a gift yeah. to be able to, to be exposed to um, information that can help you develop as a person, that can help you expand your mind, ex you know, uh, explore the possibility within your body. And um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, Dave. I, I, I'm right there with you. Then, then let's jump in. Number yeah. one. Yeah, so we talked a lot about number one last time we spoke, and it would I would be doing everyone a disservice if this wasn't number one, which is sleep. And we don't have to get too much into sleep unless you want to, because we talked we covered that last time we spoke. But unless you're prioritizing and protecting your sleep, you know, no matter what you're eating, no matter how what what you're doing from a training standpoint, um, even you know what you're doing mentally, like meditating and all these other things, developing your relationship, you're just not going to show up with the amount of energy, the amount of presence, the amount of creativity, that's possible. It really is the biggest lever that you could pull to increase all of those things that I just mentioned, creativity, Interesting. performance. And it's unfortunately, like I mentioned last time we spoke, it's the least thing that people think about. They think about, oh, you know, I need to, you know, get my fitness. I need to get my, my, my nutrition. I need to get my mind, yeah. you know, in, in order. And, and yes, all that connects to sleep, right? You can't take away the, 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 the connection between moving our bodies, what we eat, what we think. Um, but really when you prioritize and protect sleep, which is the number one, you know, I, I would say high performance health habit, it does just make everything else better. It literally everything else in your life gets better. Fantastic. Totally agree. And all these other habits, uh, everything I talk about, like you mentioned, uh, uh, fitness, health, nutrition, supplements, um, you know, all that stuff, it really comes together during the night. The hormones are rebalancing. Yep. The body's getting rid of toxins, carcinogens, pathogens. The, the estrogen's rising. The testosterone's rising. The HGH is going up. We wake up ideally with our brain functioning at its best. And let's, let's yep. face it, everything of value in our life comes from our consciousness and then is experienced through our body, right? And so if our brain isn't optimal and our body isn't optimal, everything else in our life is, is diminished. And so I totally get why that could be number one, even though that's likely counterintuitive to a lot of people, I get it. And like you said, we did a whole podcast on this. Look it up, you guys, Diarobi Health Show. It's just two episodes ago, maybe. It's, it's quite recent. And Devin gave us just a wealth of information on how to improve your sleep. So Devin, number two. Yeah. So number two is eating for energy. So this is, ah. this is really important because obviously what you put in your body is, is going to make a huge difference as far as, you know, how you show up, the amount of energy that it, it all, for me, Dave, health really comes down to energy. And, and so when you're in a high energetic state, meaning you're, you're, you're operating from a high level, you're going to be able to think clear. You're going to be able to um, be more resilient. So eating for energy essentially means eating foods that give you energy. So, you know, there isn't a perfect diet. I don't believe that there's a perfect diet. I think there's a perfect right. diet for, for you. Um, yeah. but, and that takes experimentation. But it, there are some basic think, principles that I think people often overlook, like eating live food, eating foods that have you know this kind of sounds um hippie-ish but like life force in it like the the fresh the fresher the food if it's closer to the source the more energy the more nutrients you know it's like a lot of the food that we even the health food is just dead food it doesn't have that energy that life energy in it and so if you can for instance if you can pick an apple off a tree and eat it versus go to the store and eat an apple that was sitting on the shelf that got shipped from across the, the country, there's, there's actually, you're going to get more of that energy in that apple that you just picked off the tree. So eating foods yeah. that are fresh, I'm a big believer in the fresher, the food, the better, um, locally sourced organic, 
um, green foods. Agreed. I mean, Agreed. You know, you, there's one one thing that I think all people can agree on in, in, in nutrition. It's green foods are good for us. I mean, maybe there are some that, you know, you have a sensitivity to or, you know, there's some people like that say don't eat kale or, you know, there are some lectins and things and, and you know, but at the end of the yeah. day, most people are not eating enough life enriching green foods. So uh, Uh, I want to jump in, Devin, and just point out one thing that I think is super fascinating. And, um, and, and people could debate me on this, but I want to throw it out fresh and everything you said, I agree with, but cooked food often don't, don't assume it all has to be raw and uncooked. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm with you there. Very good. I'm glad you agree with that. I didn't know if you would or not. Some people feel like not only does it have to be fresh, it should be uncooked. And the opposite is actually true. Don't feel like you cook the life force out of food. As a matter of fact, uh, chimpanzees and apes, which are our closest genetic cousins, uh, spend five hours chewing on raw foods and fibers, and they have smaller brains for a reason, right? Like (laughs) evolutional psychologists, there is a theory that the invention of fire in cooking foods is one reason why humans are able to, back to your energy point, Less energy digesting food, more energy to the brain. Yep. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with okay. you. Okay. And actually, Fantastic. what's interesting is certain foods that you cook actually bring, you know, enhance the nutrition of those foods. Right. You know, right. like uh, like t- tomatoes, like the lycopene in tomatoes. There's, there's a lot of foods. So I think just having experimenting okay. with the amount of cooked food. And, and, you know, that's that I'm a big believer, just like you mentioned in the beginning of this, of this conversation in experimentation. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, don't knock it until you really try it and try it on and see, Hey, am I feeling, is, is my digestion better because I'm eating cooked food versus eating all this raw food is, is if I eat more protein or higher fat, do I feel better? Do I, do, is that fueling my brain do I have more mental clarity? Um, you know, if I eat more carbohydrates, so it's like, I think it's nutrition is one of those things. It's, it's so hard for people to wrap their heads around and there's so much dogma in it. And there doesn't have to be, yes. it's just like, stick with the basic principles, fresh food. So, you know, things that are fresh. The basics. I the love basic. it. And, you know, and we talk so much about it, uh, Devin, I'm going to, I'm going to incur, I'm going to push you to the next point. Yeah, absolutely. Because pe- people who listen to this show, we talk so much about nutrition. I agree. Agree, agree, agree with everything you said. And it, it's deep. We could spend so much time on it. And so, so yeah, let's the next move on. Is, is, a, is what I call a PMP. So a personal movement plan. Notice how I didn't say exercise, movement. So PMP, yeah. a personal movement plan, is, is something that's designed for your unique goals, your unique lifestyle, your genetics. You know, it's, it's really looking at, well, what is it that your body needs to keep you in alignment and flourishing where you are right now? So, Devin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off for just a second because – um, I have been struggling with this for a long time. I teach people to move their body every day. I do use the word exercise and, um, and then, and, but I try to tell them, Hey, some days are recovery days. Uh, yoga counts, walking counts, everything counts. And I think you're about to go down a track that I love the direction you're going and I'm struggling with it myself. As a matter of fact, right now, before you even carry on, I already want to steal your acronym PMP <laughs> because you can have it. You can have it. I, I, I love it. And I noticed in Lifeomic, um, the Life Extend app that I share with so many people, they just use the word activity. And so I like this where you're going. And so um, c- carry on PMP, personal movement plan. Yeah. So you, your, uh, yeah. Your, your PMP evolves as you evolve. So as we evolve yeah. through life, there's certain things that we should change. One of them is our movement, how we move in the ways that we move. And so there's a lot of things in creating a, a personal movement plan. It, it's again, it's your your desires. So what what are you currently working on or working towards? You know, so for instance, um, that changes across a lifespan. Right? And if you're right. you know, uh, so as you go through a life, as we evolve as humans through over the course of life, our personal movement plans must evolve with us. And if they don't, you're going to get injured, and you're not going to mm-hmm. live as long. And so oftentimes because of the ego, people tend to hold on to, hey, I, I've always done this. This is how I have to do it. This is what I like. I'm not open to anything else. And then it ends up kicking them in the butt later on in life because now right. they're getting injured because they just couldn't let go of, of the way they thought it needed to be. And so 
a personal movement plan should be something that you're 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 checking in with on a, on a yearly basis. Definitely on every every decade, it absolutely should change uh, drastically. Mm. But you know, as as you get older and, and you start to you know muscles more stress, you, you need more flexibility, you need more mobility. As we you know, it's always good to have that. But as you go throughout time you're going to want to focus more on mobility and flexibility as you age. Right. right? Versus yeah. Maybe more so when someone's in their twenties or focusing more on strength and speed and, and agility. Um, and so anyway, there's a lot of different ways of moving our bodies. Then, then you, then there's the personal preference aspect of this, because if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you're probably not going to continue to do it. So learning how to enjoy things that you don't enjoy is a great practice. Um, and also experimenting with different ways of moving to to find something that you can enjoy as you go throughout life is also very, very important and a part of this personal movement plan, this PMP. I love it. And I did not miss where you said I could steal your idea, just blatantly hawk it and put it on my <laughs> yeah. stuff. And I'll, well, maybe, I'll maybe I love just, it. Yeah, maybe, maybe just put a little, hey, I, I learned this from Devin. I, don't I know. learned this from Devin. Yeah. Thanks to Devin Burke for this great idea. Now there I'm going to run go. with it. <laughs> Please spread it's it. A, it's going to help people. So honestly, it's outstanding. It's something I have really struggled with. I did a web, mm -hmm. a, a, web a workshop just yesterday. Uh, we've got a lot of new customers right now. Um, that's specifically interested in weight loss. And, um, I did a rapid weight loss workshop last night and there's seven principles that I'm teaching for that. And, and one of them is exercise. And honestly, I, I've just never been totally comfortable with how to do this. Some people were raised as jocks. Some people hated gym class. Some people have different, we got endomorphs, ectomorphs and, yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, mesomorph body types. We have sprinters. We have people go along. We have people like yoga and people that can't stand it. And it's, it's so difficult. We, we, I, I want to teach these things to people, but it's so hard for people, especially those that weren't raised with an athletic background. Yeah. I think that's the most difficult because um, you have now the added, they don't have the habits. They never did have a coach watching them move. Yep. Um, so, so I didn't want to belabor this point too much, but maybe one little bit of advice to that group of people. They have the desire, but they don't know where to start or what to do. And they may even be embarrassed. They may even not want to do something in front of a group of people or hit the, hit the gym. Yeah. You know, so I, I like to break it down in very sort of basic, just basic ways. So if you do something to increase your strength, if you do something to work on your flexibility and mobility, your cardiovascular health or fitness, those are like the core areas that you want to work on mobility, flexibility, strength, and, and, um, cardiovascular health, like those yeah, are, yeah. you know, so if you can find something that you enjoy that sort of covers all of those bases, or maybe you, you mix it up and do different things, that's really an ideal PMP covers checks off those boxes. Those and three. Those. Yeah. And it, and it's, mm -hmm. as you go through, as you age, that's going to change, right? Again, you're going to focus more maybe on mobility and flexibility as you go through age versus may, Maybe not. Maybe you focus more on strength, but just in different ways. So, oh, oh, trust me, Devin. I'm 55 years old. Trust me, I, I have adopted a lot towards mobility over the years. I yeah. wish I would have figured it out when I was younger. I would have been a better athlete yeah, if, but, if I. Yeah, yeah. It's it, yeah. it makes a big difference. I mean, and now there's there's great resources like uh, functional patterns. The Agoscu uh, Agoscu uh, method is fantastic for aligning, you know, posture and. Um, there's there's all kinds of really amazing new ways of moving our bodies from these these teachers um, right. that are now available for people just to to explore and try on. Uh, but the thing the thing what you were saying I think is just like get in the game. Like if you're not moving your body, just start. Even if you just walk, um, is that's yeah. something is better than nothing. And you can really take it to to the extreme of the nitty gritty. Like functional patterns is some someone that I'm. I'm a big fan of, I bought some of their programs and they That's really perfect. get into the muscles and, you know, the mobility aspect and, but you don't have to, Interesting. That's not your thing, you know? Yeah. I bought a course from uh, Eli eggs, the German calisthenics guy. Have you heard of him? No, I haven't. No, he is terrific. Right. Check out his YouTube channel. Okay. Eli eggs. I okay. bought his mobility course. He's a calisthenics guy. 
and um, really well worth following. But we've we've belabored this point a little bit. It's fantastic, <laughs> but we got a lot of ground to cover. So what's next? Yeah. So the, the next one is checking in and checking out. So so this is this is um, really understanding the check in with yourself, and this is and also check out, meaning like check out, make sure that you're checking out of your technology, you're 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 mm. taking vacations, you're you're practicing, you know, uh, deep work. It's it's so important that we check in on a constant basis with you know how are we feeling, what's going on in our bodies. Uh, so that we understand and can start to listen to what our body's trying to, to speak to us. That's the check-in. And then the checkout process is getting away from everything, is really creating the space for your mind and your, your, your spirit to expand and change. Like checking out is a change of environment. So that could be a vacation, that could be a workshop, that could be a retreat. But ideally, it's something that's away from technology. We're so... Right. attached to our technology and um, we need to have intentional times that we check out of it and hopefully for for at least a day if not longer so that we can you know again check in with what's important and we can start to listen to our bodies which often we we, we tend not to because we're just the nature of of the world that we live in with what's going on in this time Fantastic. I got to tell you, I'm so happy with Apple. I've always been an Apple fan. I've always had Macintosh computers. I've got an Apple watch, which I love. I use it for my fitness and all kinds of things. And, and I love the direction they're going. What are the things they've added? I mean, there's always been airplane mode, right? So if you want to just check out, one of the first things you can do is airplane mode, but then you're, you're, you're not just checked out. Your machine is also checked out, right. you're not necessarily capturing everything that you want. And they have a new focus mode. Have you seen that on uh, iPhones? No, I haven't. No, that's that's iPhones, sounds... iPads. They have what's called focus mode. Hmm. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, focus mode. You're you're not disturbed without completely turning off uh, your di device from uh, from the web. And and I love that. They also have my watch tells me to take mindfulness moments. I love that. I do too. And I, I love how technology is is going in this direction of helping us be more mindful. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it can be used both ways. I, I think there's definitely right. a, a swing with people that uh, technology, unfortunately, it can, it can absolutely be helpful and can help us set reminders. And But I think right now, it's more detracting from our health, at least these devices. Um, although I think now, you know, people are starting waking up to like, hey, this is this isn't healthy. I, I need the time to be away from all of this. And um, I think the pendulum is kind of swinging back. Um, so, you know, but it, it, everyone's kind of different with their capacity and everyone, ha you know, but I think it's very important. And I find this with people that, again, are very high performing people that are on technology or even work in technology, designing technology. Um, it's, it's been extremely beneficial for, for those people. To totally disconnect. Yeah. And so um, I, I really think people can flip the technology. I, I use my technology to meditate. Um, mm. My favorite app is the waking up app. I do the 20 yeah. minute meditation every day. It's dead simple. Are you familiar with Sam Harris and the waking up? Sam Harris. Great guy. I'm amazing uh, teacher. Yeah. Me too. And guess what? His app is absolutely fantastic and getting better all the time. So my technology and the fact that I can have all my notifications off so I can be in focus mode. So I'm not getting texts and nothing's beeping. And, and then uh, another thing, uh, that I recommend everyone, again, back to using your technology, don't use it all for entertainment necessarily. Uh, do you know Jack Cornfield? Yeah. The Wisdom podcast? I don't know his podcast, but I know Jack Cornfield for sure, his work. Okay. Uh, checking in, you know, his, his podcast is just fantastic. Awesome. And I think it's really supportive of anyone from any background. I don't think it matters what your belief system is, whether religious or non-religious, Christian or Buddhist or Hindu. It doesn't really matter. He's just a, a really um, all-round kind of wonderful teacher. Hmm. And so, you know, sometimes I like, like to be entertained like anybody else. Yeah. But other times I want to be uplifted. You know what I mean? I just want something that is, is um, not just mindless entertainment right. try to do less of that and more mindful growth type of so so i think just taking our technology 
and using it for our fitness, for our mindfulness, for teaching, for picking up really great um, uh, tips and tricks from fantastic teachers. Uh, we could just flip that. Absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, for sure. You can make your car like a university by listening to the podcast. Right. You know, you can totally- Drive time university. Absolutely. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, yeah. And it, that takes intention. That takes awareness. And that also takes desire. And mm. so, but I think there also is something to be said about um, not filling up the cup so much all the time because, because now we are, we do have access to all these amazing tools and for people that are growth oriented and, and want to expand and want to, you know, um, develop even more. Sometimes at least my own experience, I've been times where it's just information overload, like too much. I just need to just kind of let it distill because we are, we're bodies of information. And so we're taking on information and our bodies are essentially expanding this information. And Sometimes it's just like, you just got to turn the faucet off and just let all the information that you already have in you just settle down. And that's really what I mean by checking out. Interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. And yeah. It, I love that. It, it comes in waves, you know? So, so it's like, I think at some point you, 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 you take in all this information and then you, you check out to let the information be distilled or, or realize from, from knowledge to wisdom um, when it's too much, too fast, it can be confusing. It can create stress even if it's good stuff. Um, so, so anyway, right. there's some just silence. Having silence is, is really, and, and I know you do that with waking up, which is amazing. Um, it, it's like any type of silence is, is really beneficial for, for people, uh, especially high performing people. Uh, it's, it's, you talked about retreats. Um, I've been on, uh, uh, on retreats myself. I've, I've never done anything longer than a weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. I plan on doing a seven day at, um, at uh, the Thich Nhat Hanh uh, oh, meditation facility in Plum Village, not in France, in okay. um, Southern California. Wow, I didn't know. I didn't know you had one over in. in uh... Yeah, yeah, they've got a beautiful place down there. I've got a lot of friends who've been. Uh, wow. You can just take a take a tent and camp uh, down there, or you can uh, pay a little extra and get a room. And wow. uh, people people drive down there, and um, they do a lot of, of seven day uh, hmm. silent retreats. Now that's in Southern California, um, but you mentioned retreats. Is there any particular group or or um, a place that you go or recommend or something people you can know, go to to just get away and do a retreat? I, I've always done just personal retreats with myself, but I am open to, uh, and I actually have a desire to do a 10-day Vipassana retreat um, where you're sitting in silence for like 10 hours a day for 10 days. Um, haven't made the opportunity to do to totally check out for 10 days like that yet uh but yeah the retreats that i really go on is just it's getting out in nature and and really just creating the intentional space just for quiet um, okay a personal retreat personal retreat so but yeah i mean let you know guided retreats there's there's online retreats there's amazing retreat centers all over the place um so i think i think trying different things on just whatever you feel called to or whatever you have space for I think it's, you, you know, you want to listen to that. But for me personally, I've, I've always just, and do sort of my, my own personal uh, retreat, if you, if you want to call it that. Fantastic. Yeah. Love it. Let's, yeah. uh, let's move on. What's next? So next is creating systems and, and delegating. So this is, you know, not only obviously is this really important for, for running a business, but for your health, you know, creating syst health systems and delegating things so that you don't have to think about them when it comes to your health. And I'll give you a couple examples is, you know, having like a, a either a private chef or if, if that's out of reach, you could have a meal delivery service that's cooking you healthy, delicious, fresh food and delivering it. So you're not, you know, you're not in the kitchen cooking it yourself. Although that's awesome. If you, if you have the space and you enjoy doing that, creating systems around like that, that's a system is saves you time and also creates more space for you to focus on other things. So some systems that I use is I actually have somebody that grow is a personal farmer for me. He grows sprouts and wheatgrass and, and all these things. And he blends it up in, in a smoothie like the milkman. And he delivers it to my doorstep in this vacuum. Awesome. Field. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. I have a personal farmer that does that. Right. So, so that, that's an example of, Rather than me growing wheatgrass and sunflower sprouts and and and, and having you know superfoods and putting it all in a blender, I just have somebody else do that for me. Um, 
that's a system that's I'm delegating that because it's important to me. And so there's, I think it's if, when we start to think about health systems, it makes it easier to stay consistent, which is so important when, we, when we're talking about longevity and health and high performance is consistency. So systems and delegation lead to consistency. So whenever you can delegate or create a system, that's going to help with consistency. Consistency is going to help with longevity and performance and more energy. It's that simple. Can you give us some more examples? And uh, let's assume that the average listener to the podcast is not a business owner necessarily. Okay. You've, you're used to working with entrepreneurs yes. and people who have a business. But you've but then you listed a system that you do that anyone could do, which is a, a way of getting a really high quality, high nutrition, you know, power packed drink delivered. Any other ideas like that 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 anyone in any situation could do? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's a bunch. I mean, one of them you already mentioned is, is having a meditation app. That's a system, you know, so rather than going to a meditation center or trying to do it on your own, you have a time and you have a, a, a teacher and you use an app like that. It's you're delegating a mindfulness practice to an app with a teacher. So, right. any, so you can use leverage. There's a lot of amazing technology that like that, like the waking up app that you can, integrate into your lifestyle to just make it easier. Um, you know, another, another easy system that you could, you could create is having things auto ordered on like supplements, for instance, um, or, you know, anything that's going to like, so you don't, the, the, the idea is to not have to think about it. It just happens. So it'd be so smart for everyone listening to just go to dirobi.com and pick an auto ship of our products and save 20%. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> see you out there, Dave. Um, yeah, because now look, I can't now, help it. I can't help it. Yeah, no, of course. It's it's a great it's great what you're doing. And it's great that you offer that because <laughs> now people don't have to think about it. It's just you know yeah, you're gonna yeah. get your minerals and your supplements and all that just delivered to your doorstep and and then you 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 know you another simple system is having one of these um these uh pill boxes that you put your supplements in rather than open up all the boxes or open up all the things, just have it laid out for you so that you just open one thing yeah. and then you take it. And it's easy, like make optimizing your health and performance easy. So anything that's going to create something that will save you time or will create time for you to focus on something else, essentially, usually there's a system and delegation attached to that. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of some other systems that would be that I, that I, I'm just thinking. It's first. okay. I think those yeah. examples are fantastic. Yeah. Um, again, you know, we could spend so much time, like you said at the beginning, every single one of these we could dive deep into. So that's probably people get the idea. Yeah. What's the next one. Community. On. Having a community. So I know Dave, you, you know, you're cultivating a community of people that are looking to, you know, increase their, their health and their performance and their life, but really getting connected to a community whether that's within a church or whether that's within your actual vicinity of where you li live, it's so important for mental health. It's so important for health. The blue zones. I, I don't know if you've ever uh, studied the blue zones or talked about We've that. Done, done two ep two episodes on them. So people already know it's how important that is to longevity and health. And I think that there's still a great people, a great amount of people that that just don't take the time or the energy to invest in actually finding community or creating a community if you can't find one. Um, and it, it, I, cause loneliness is a killer and you can be doing all these other things, but if you feel disconnected and you feel lonely and you don't, you're not relating to people, there's a huge, huge problem. It's you're, you're going to suffer massively, um, mentally as well as physically. And so, so creating community, we don't have to jam on this if you've done a lot of uh, talks on Blue Zones and people people get it. But make sure if you're not a part of a community that you you search for a community. And if you can't find a community that you can connect with, create your own. You know, be somebody. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, thank you. And that's a really great point. And a lot of people lost some community during COVID. That's yeah. a big deal. A lot of people, like you said, their community might have been. Uh, their church or synagogue or temple yeah. uh, from the religious side. Um, it could be a charity that they love to participate in. And there's other volunteers that they get together and do stuff. 
Um, for me, for the longest time, I had a community of fitness buddies. Yep. I was in a triathlon club for years, for example, and we swam every Tuesday and we did a long run up in the, on, the, on the mountain trails on a Saturday and it was fantastic. We all got to know each other and we spent hours and hours together. It's like you said, though, about life, how life changes. You know, I stopped doing triathlon and I didn't realize uh, what that it, I wasn't just quitting triathlon. I was committed. I was leaving a group mm. and I, I didn't really think about that at the time. But I, I miss a lot of those people. I, I'm not going to go back to triathlon for various reasons. Uh, but but personally, I've struggled with this. There's times that I've left a community and haven't formed or joined a new one. And it's come back to, to bite me. I can, I can, I can sense that, that, Hey, I, I, I need to go join right now. I'm part of the first T program. It's a youth development program for chill, uh, people in disadvantaged situations, help them, um, develop, uh, integrity and sportsmanship through golf, Amazing. um, ki kids, five to 18 years old. And I, I participate with the charity, go to the events and, and, uh, and it's not a, a real tight knit community. It's not like we get together a whole lot. We do a couple golf tournaments. We do some coaching. Um, and that's, it's just been fun, yeah. uh, but that's, it's part-time. Right. Um, but then my family is also my main community. Yep. Yeah. Right. And, and frankly, Devin, uh, I've also made the mistake of sometimes taking that for granted. Like, uh, I, I see people that mm -hmm. are so, so, um, interested in the communities out there that they forget about the people that are right around them that need them and count on them and, and want, you know, so I, I think, I think it's a good idea to reevaluate your family and how well you're doing in your own family as your community before you step out, you know, kind of leave them behind going yeah. off to a community <laughs> uh, yeah. that's not so important. Really insightful, Dave, really insightful. Yeah. I think it's, uh, you know, we often miss what's right in front of us. I'm right there with you. I, you know, you, you know, you think about you. You go through high school. You have your high school friends. You move to. You usually most people go to college, and maybe you have a college buddies, and then you sort of make families. And as life changes, your community changes, or maybe you were part of a church, and then you were getting filled by the spirit there, and you left. And you, so it's like as you evolve, just like a personal movement plan, maybe it's a personal community plan. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, I like that. It's an ever evolving thing, and it's so important if you leave a community to, I think, find a find another community or or just, you know, create a, right. a a more harmonious community within your own family if you have one. If you have, you know, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. I, I feel personally like I, I'm a part of a lot of commu amazing communities, but a lot of them are virtual, and I really okay. do miss. You know, I love I, which is why I go to a lot of these personal development seminars, health seminars, so I can be around people that are like minded. And for that weekend or that week or however long it is, there is a sense of a community that gets created. and It just fills me up. And I see what that does for my own energy and for my own creativity, physically being around people that are, you know, of the same mind. It's it's like it's like drinking from a. Uh, a well that just fills you up. And for me, I, I, I feel that it gets depleted, especially with the COVID and everything that's happening where people are just really fearful of, of being with other people. It's uh, it's a shame because it's, it really does affect, it has an effect on, um, on us as humans. We need, we need each other. So we can all of us do a little self-evaluation and be more intentional about our community. What is our current community like? Do we need to join a new community? Is our current community fulfilling and really filling our needs or should we be looking elsewhere? I love it. What's next? Measure in progress. So we manage what we measure. So this is an important thing and you can measure progress in any of these areas that we talked about, your, your fitness, your nutrition, your sleep, your community, how you feel emotionally, the level of connection you have with the people that are around you and your intimate relationships, just assessing yourself. And this is, it kind of, it overlaps with the other one of checking in, but really having assessments and leveraging technology is a great resource for, for this particular area, you know, assessing blood work, getting blood work done, you know, a couple times a year, getting stool tests done, you know, just measuring, getting some quantum, you know, data, you know, around your health to then make better decisions moving forward is essential habit. 
it really is so important to do. And I, I think that a lot of people don't do enough of it. They just, for whatever reason, they don't do it. <laughs> so it's like, you know, if you're measuring it, you can see the pro progress. If you're experimenting, you can see, hey, did this experiment work? Yes, no. Um, and it just, it just makes things easier. So again, that's, that's definitely, it's, it's an important habit, measuring progress or measuring in general. Okay. I love it. And the last one, know thyself. Yeah. So this one is, is really about, again, getting connected with, with your, who you are as a person, your purpose, your desires, uh, where you are now, what, what do you need? You know, what's, what are you resisting? Just doing some self inquiry. It, it goes a long way. Even so this could be like taking a Myers Briggs disc assessment or Myers Briggs or a personality assessment, like get to know yourself. It's a lot of times, at least in my experience and working with the, the, the type of people that I, I, I work with, they, we get so busy with a goal that we, for, we, we think that we become this, we don't, we disconnect from ourselves. And so if you're not constantly really getting to know yourself and, and checking in, you can lose yourself essentially. And it, it, depending on how we're, what we're talking about, that might be a good thing. Um, but in this context, it's just, you know, as you're going through and moving through life, do the work to get to know yourself. What, it, it's so it, it'll, it'll yield quantum leaps in your decision-making process to better your health and all these other areas that we already spoke about. Yeah, I, I like that. It's an area I'm very interested in. And as I listen to, you know, various trainers and, and I've read a lot of Buddhist stuff. I like Eastern thought. And, and, and uh, if you read like, uh, have you ever read Old Path, White Clouds? Walking no. down the steps of the Buddha. No, I haven't. But oh I haven't. my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's a good book. Um, okay. It's by Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, I I'm reading one of his books right now. Living Buddha, what? Living Christ, I think. is the, or Living Christ. I've living read Christ. that. Living, yeah. living, living Christ, Living Buddha, I think. I'm, right. I'm not sure which way it goes, actually. I've recommended that to a few people. Um, and then his uh, book of joy, uh, not his book of joy, I'm sorry, the Dalai Lama and um, Desmond Tutu, mm. uh, where you've got a Christian Buddhist, two world leaders chatting is another interesting kind of interconnection of Christianity and, and Buddhism. But, but anyways, um, one of the tricks of Zen, okay, is that someone comes looking for knowledge, self-knowledge. And one of the, one of the answers that they often say, or the Buddha, you know, someone's, so an ancient story of the Buddha, someone comes and they ask a question. He, and he simply says, who's asking? Yeah. <laughs> and they go, well, I am, you know, Pranit. No, that's a label. That's mm. not who you are. You just told me your name. Yeah. And they go through this process of who are you? And, and then, um, and, and other teachers like um, Alan Watts, right? Uh, he's a fun lecturer, you yeah. know, um, that, that will talk about these things, you know, of, like identifying who you are is a tricky business is what I'm getting. And then there's social science to this as well. So we, Sometimes we like Alan Watts talks a lot about you don't know what you want. Because I can take any of you. He takes a person in the, in the room and says, "You, what do you want?" <laughs> and they're dumbfounded. Yeah, I don't know. All right, like, okay. And often, yeah, we think what, what we think will make us happy. Often is we end up learning that no, that's not it. Right, all this money or all this prestige or all these accolades or this type of woman or you know, all of these conditions, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it, yeah, you realize, and I, and I hear this all the time from people like I have all these things. I have this amazing house, this amazing business, this amazing wife, kids, the whole thing. And like, I'm still like not happy. Like I thought I'd be, and it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Between those two concepts of many people not knowing who they are or what they want, myself included. And then we yeah. have social scientists who tell us we're also terrible at self-assessing. So I'm kind of deconstructing what you said to come back to a point of, of pragmatism. But um, in self-assessment, are you a good driver? Yes, I'm an excellent driver. Um, you can ask people in, in jail, 
are you a moral person? Yes, I'm very, very moral. I'm a very upstanding <laughs> person. People who have lots of traffic accidents that they caused think they're better drivers mm. than the norm. Everyone thinks they're honest. Yeah. But we we lie. We lie to ourselves. And we, we we're and it can be very, very, very subtle, right? So as human beings, what I'm saying is we're really not that good at self-assessment. And we don't put in that quality time, like what you're kind of in recommending here mm. of analyzing, well, who are we, who, what exactly is it uh, that we want? I mean, your, your check, your, you know, your, your, your checkout process, part of that I'm sure is comes back yeah. to this point. Absolutely. Part of it is discovery, your retreat, the personal retreat. What's the point of a personal retreat? Well, there can be many, but it's a self-discovery part of a self-discovery project as well, right? So, so all that being said, the other reason I think this is important because the takeaway here is number one, I think it requires a high level of humility. We're trying to put the ego aside. Yeah. Right? And all those things you mentioned, a, a trophy wife, a Lamborghini, whatever it is, <laughs> right? Yeah. The, the body of a Greek goddess. Whatever it is we have in our mind that we think is going to do it for us, right? Much of that stuff is just ego. Yep. So it's almost not almost all of it, I would say. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with any of those things, having those things, having pleasure, but a lot, oftentimes it is, it's just, it is ego. It's, um, it's, yeah, when if you can do things to, you know, that's why coaching is, is so powerful. Having, gaining perspective, having people, you know, looking at helping you, remove the box a little bit that you, we all have on our subjective experience to give more perspective. Knowing yourself is about getting, getting perspective and you can accelerate that process through coaching, through spiritual teachers, um, through plant medicine, you know, through, there's a lot of different tools to, I think, just start to take the box off a little bit so that you can really get to know yourself. Um, and let, I, let me tell you one, one other, um, sorry to interrupt, but yeah. this one's very pract practical back to weight loss, right? I hear this all the time. I've tried a lot of things. I can't lose weight. That becomes a belief and people have the story to back it up and the history. Yeah. And again, it's a self-analysis that yep. it's, it's hard. I, it's hard for me. I can't just say to them as a coach, well, it's all in your head. Because it's not all in their head. They do have experience. Yep. But the fact is, I have to help them overcome that belief somehow. We do a lot of right? that at Science Academy. It's you know, People say all the time, I hear this, I've tried everything. You know, I've tried everything. Nothing's worked. And I said, really? You've tried everything? Yeah, I've tried everything. Okay, tell me what you've tried. Well, I've tried this and I've tried that and I've tried this and I've tried that. I'm like, okay, that's everything? Okay, well, no, it's not everything. Well, why, why are you telling yourself? <laughs> You know, so it's like, have you tried what I'm gonna about to recommend? Because, you know, so it's, yeah, I think it, it's it's so important to get that perspective. And I think understanding the programs that run from a societal standpoint, from our past, you know, the the, the core wounds, if you will, of I'm not enough, right? That's that's running around rampant. And if, if you don't have this, that's really what creates consumerism is the, the, you know, you see, oh, these beautiful women and these, it's like, oh, you you're not enough unless you look this way or you have this. That's a program. So understanding and gaining some insight on these programs that are installed from society and from our parents um, and from our churches and, and, and just being in the world, that's a good, a good level of start, starting to see things more clear. And then really understanding that you can change. And when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, that's what Wayne Dyer uh, said, which is true. And shift perspective and challenge your, you know, doubt your doubts or challenge the things that are keeping you stuck. And that's really what a coach, I mean, that's Dave, what you're, what you're doing for people. And that's what I'm doing at Sleep Science Academy is helping people just get perspective and then giving them the plan, the plan and some tools and accountability to then have a result. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we as coaches are dealing with the exact same things. It's so funny. We're all just human. Yeah, We're all just human. Some of us are better at one thing than someone else, but we totally struggle and are a train wreck in, in another area of our lives. But I love what you said about coaching. I have a business coach. Uh, we meet uh, for an hour uh, a month yep. uh, with me and my two other key employees. And it's fantastic. And he he's gotten to know our business over the last couple of years. 
and uh, he helps with marketing and, and stuff. And we run our ideas by him. It's just an hour a month and it's absolutely priceless. Yeah. Um, and uh, I probably need to do the same in my, in, 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 uh, for personally, I, I ought to just find another coach. Yeah. Just meet. Here's my personal goals. Help me. Uh, do you have a coach, Devin? Or I have do. you had yeah. a coach? Or? I have, yeah, lots of coaches. Um, I okay. have a, I do have a business coach that I work with and, uh, I'm actually starting, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm starting to work with uh, a therapist in the new year. She's so booked. I had to book her months and months in advance because this woman is very, uh, prolific in her work. Uh, and I'm oh. very much looking forward to getting coached by her. She, she actually studied with uh, Byron Katie. So, um, which is uh, an amazing, for, for people that are listening to this, that don't know Byron Katie, she's incredible. The work is these four questions that literally can change your life because they help you shift your, your perspective. And then you can see it's, it's, uh, she's an incredible. Coach. Anyway. So yeah, I'm very much, this is a gift to myself for the, in the new year, I'm starting this process with this, um, she's a therapist. Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, we all need support. We all, you know, no matter how, you know, and personally, I'm constantly working on things, you know, my yeah. leasing judgment and being more consistent with certain things. And, you know, we're all, we are all in this together. And you, no matter how much, you know, or if you're an, you know, an expert, everyone's an expert usually in something. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, we're all, you know, works in progress, including, including myself for sure. Fantastic. Well, I love it. These have been uh, eight really interesting things to discuss. Every one of them deserves its own podcast, really. And so um, at times I've kind of cut you off and, and moved things along, even though we could have dove in. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but uh, but uh, to just touch on them and maybe for those of you listening, there's one area that really jumped out at you. Maybe dive more into that. And, um, um, you know, maybe one of these jumped out as, hey, that's an area I really need to uh, – uh, to work on. And that, I had that experience for myself, uh, Devin, as you talked, there's one area, I'm, I'm not going to say what it is, but one of them, I was like, that's something I'm going to really focus on mm. for the next little while. So it's been fantastic. I hope other people listening have had a similar experience and been uplifted and edified and, <laughs> and motivated and in some way and learned some things, Devin, I'm sure they did. Well, so thanks. Uh, yeah. Parting thoughts, parting thoughts. Yeah, just like like a parting thought would be any of these eight habits, whatever one jumped out to you, like I said, just take take action. Don't don't let this hour, if you listen to this or join that slide, don't don't let this pass you by. If you had any type of insight, any type of aha, it's like boom, there you go. That's that's the thing to, to focus on and and get support around. Like each of these things, you can you can find people that can help you. Um, right. Whether it's nutrition or it's sleep or it's your business with you know or whatever it is get support. It's, it's, it's well worth paying somebody that is further along than you are. That is, that it has more experience to help you accelerate the learning curve. So you don't have to make the same mistakes. And, um, I've invested so much over the years in getting support and it always has come back, um, tenfold. So I'm a big fan. Yeah. Okay. Well, Devin, thank you so much. How do people learn more about you? Do you have social media they can follow to share your website and any, anywhere else people can follow you? Yeah. So for people that are looking for help with their number one sleep, uh, sleep science Academy, or, you know, Devin Burke is my personal website, Devin Burke wellness across all the social platforms, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I'm not super active on social media. I, I pretend to be, but I do like to share, share the things that I've learned that have been helpful for me. So I do a little bit of that on those channels. Okay. Well, Devin, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Dave, thanks for having me back. Was, uh, this hour again flew by. So um, I'm sure, I'm sure that people that listen to this will hopefully get as much as, as I did just from you asking these great questions and being, being who you are. So thanks. for. The I work. think so. It's, it's been fantastic. Thanks again. And for all of you listening, this is Dave Sherwin wishing you health and success.